Okay, so we've already applied the uh, polygonized mesh to the particle system, but I did mention in a previous video that there's actually a better way of doing this than using these standard parameters over here. Now, these parameters in this polygonized mesh work great for a fluid simulation or some other type of uh, Lagoa particle effect. But when you're really trying to do something uh, very water-like and fluid-like in general, what you want to do is you want to take advantage of something called the Lagoa Fluid Shaper. This compound will give you much better results and more realistic fluids uh, when used in conjunction with a Lagoa uh, fluid simulation. Okay? So how do we use this? Well, it's pretty simple. Make sure your polygonized mesh, the actual water mesh here, the fluid mesh, is selected. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the deform menu down here, go to create, and you're going to find yourself a Lagoa Fluid Shaper. So go ahead and select Lagoa Fluid Shaper. That's going to create a new ice tree, open up this PPG as well for the Lagoa Fluid Shaper. And uh, if you have the polygonized mesh selected and you refresh your ice tree, let me move this out of the way, you're going to notice the polygonizer over here has a uh, Lagoa Fluid Shaper ice tree to it. And it applies this Lagoa Fluid Shaper node. And these, this is the PPG over here on the left. This is the PPG for the Lagoa Fluid Shaper. It's got lots of settings and things. One thing that's really important to note, however, is that when you're using the Lagoa Fluid Shaper to smooth your mesh out and shape the mesh, you don't want to use the polygonizer options over here. So you don't want to use like the ISO field blur and the smooth the mesh parameters because what's going to happen is you're going to apply smoothing twice to your, uh, to your fluid mesh and that's not going to give you the results that you're looking for. So if you are going to use the Lagoa Fluid Shaper node, what you want to do is come back to your Polygonizer node and make sure you turn off all of these blur settings over here and stuff. You don't need that stuff, okay? So set that stuff off. And now you've got yourself just a Fluid Shaper adjusting the shape of the actual Polygonized Mesh. So this will look more like a fluid than what we were previously using, okay? You can see already it's... Uh, in the, in the render region, it already looks a lot better just using the Lagoa Fluid Shaper. Now we've got some pretty neat options we can use here. The mesh flattening, if I take that off, it creates a more blobby sort of fluid, uh, more foamy looking, and just it makes it look more bloated, which may or may not be what you want to do. If you're trying to go for a more realistic fluid, then you want to have flatten turned on, which it is by default. And then you can control the intensity of the flattening. So you can increase the flattening, as you can see, the effect that has. If I maximize this view, you'll be able to see this a little bit better. If I drop the flattening, it starts to bloat, bloat up and become more blobby. I find that the default settings look pretty good, but you may want to go in and adjust some stuff depending on your project and what you're trying to do. You've also got a uh, mesh smoothing down here, so you can smooth the mesh more or less. Just depends on you and you know the look of the uh, fluid that you're going for. Now I'm going to keep the default settings. I think they're pretty good, so let me close that. I'm also going to go to the, um, to the mesh over here, and I'm going to increase the detail level. Um, you could increase it to 5, which is going to give you a pretty dense high-res mesh. I like to keep it between maybe 3 and 5, somewhere in the middle there, because if this is really high-res, it's just going to kind of slow things down a bit. For final you know, production type work, you probably want to use a level 5 detail when you're going to do a final render. But for the purposes of this tutorial and just not bogging stuff down and slowing, and slowing down the pace of the tutorial, I'm going to keep it at uh, about 3.8. looks pretty good. And if I render this out, you notice it's a pretty detailed mesh. You can see all the little droplets of water as the water splashes down at the bottom of the sink and stuff like that. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty neat. You get yourself a pretty good looking fluid uh, by using this. So let me go back to the ice tree here. I'm going to go back to the actual particle cloud and uh, let me go to the emit node here. Now let me push this down with a negative 10 and here come my particles just splashing down at the bottom. Looks, uh, looks pretty good. I'm going to say I'm happy with that for the moment but feel free to continue to tweak the settings if you like just to get different results and just to get a feel for it and play around with it a little bit more. Alright, so uh, that's going to do it for the uh, fluid shaper. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, and in the next one, we're going to start talking about caching, which is a very powerful tool inside of uh, Softimage with ICE to speed up your workflow significantly.